Hyrule Warriors Legends second DLC, the Link's Awakening pack, is here at last, and oh my, is there a lot to talk about. Out of all the DLC packs that have been released for Hyrule Warriors and Hyrule Warriors Legends, this may be the most substantial update so far. On top of raising the level cap from 99 to 150, the pack itself gives you the new character Marin, a new weapon for Linkle, the Koholan Island map, all of the typical unlockables which come along with that, and never seen before is a new category of weapons which represents a huge change in the combat to come. Before I go further into this review, I should probably mention that the majority of this content is 3DS only. If you're playing on the Wii U, you will only be able to get Marin and Linkle's new weapon. Now, those two things are nothing to scoff at, but I should probably point that out right now. So since I've already covered Marin and Linkle's boot mechanics in detail in two separate videos on the same day the DLC dropped, I'll try to not repeat myself too much. Put simply, Marin's bell, which she rings to send out shockwaves as well as summon the windfish, is a masterpiece. In short, she's a medium range fighter done right, and I think she's easily one of the most powerful and enjoyable characters in the entire game. On the other side of things, we have Linkle's boots, which unfortunately do not shine as brightly as Marin's bell. While I do love the concept of having an all kick based fighter, I'm not sure it was totally delivered on as adequately as it should have been. You would think by not having to carry around a weapon that this would lighten Linkle's load, but somehow this is the slowest lightning weapon we've received thus far. They are powerful and they look cool, but certain aspects of them make me think that they might have been a little bit rushed. For example, Linkle's basic moving animation in them is simply a half speed version of her dash. Anyways, besides these two characters, the second biggest part of this DLC comes with the introduction of Koholint Island as our new adventure mode map. While the map itself is on the smaller size, being 14 squares horizontal and 6 vertical, making for a total of 84 challenges, Considering all of the unlockables packed onto this map, there might be more here to grab than any other map before. There are 20 new Skultulas, even more heart pieces, more fairy clothing, more fairy food, 16 new costumes, all of the upper level weapons for Marin's Bell and Linkle's Boots, and then finally, the 12 rank 4 plus weapons to be found here. Now I'm going to go ahead and talk about the costumes, which yes, once again we've only received 16 of, meaning that we can assume that the final two DLC packs will only bring us 32 more. Also, I have a feeling that Medley, Marin, and the later new characters will probably not be getting any other costumes. If you think about it, the developers can't assume that future purchasers of Pack 4 will have also definitely purchased Marin in Pack 2. So to avoid player disappointment, it would be safer to not give her anything in the future. This is a bit disappointing, but I'm still holding out that there might be some kind of free or paid costume packs for the additional DLC characters. Anyways, this time, this group right here are the lucky ones receiving new colors, and to be honest, the costumes that they get are without a doubt the most bizarre recolors out of everything we've seen so far. I'm going to be doing a video about where the various colors they've chosen come from, so be sure to stay tuned for that later on. Okay, so when first looking at Koholan Island, it certainly seemed like this would be the most complicated map we've received thus far, but it turns out that this could not be further from the truth. Scattered throughout the map are all of the eight instruments gathered in the original Link's Awakening game. These instruments are used for getting rid of the nightmares on the map, which stop you from progressing, but they also give you some kind of boost for the next three challenges. Just to quickly cover them all, the cello starts you out with a full special attack, the horn reduces the damage you take, the bell starts you out with full magic, the harp increases the experience you earn, the marimba increases the rupees you gain, the triangle increases the food you find, the organ increases how many materials drop, and the drum increases the weapon drop rate. Some of these are much more prevalent in the map than others, but basically this allows you to always have some kind of help in case you're having trouble with the challenge. Also this means you'll always have a little bit of boost if you're trying to focus on getting certain drops. Other than these instruments, there are only four other kinds of item cards to be used in this map, making things remarkably simple. You have the compass, which is the same as it's always been. Then there is the Grandpa Ulrira item card, which is used at foam booths you find, which allows you to unlock the prize to be found on that challenge. Then there are the power bracelet item cards, which are used to lift certain rocks, and also allow you to unlock the prize to be found on that challenge. And then lastly, there is the magic powder, which is used to light torches and allows you to reach some locked off squares on the map. Sometimes there will be things like multiple boulders to lift up, requiring you to use your compass if you don't want to take a risk at getting things wrong, but otherwise this is as straightforward as any map has been. 
Straightforward also describes the two new kinds of challenges, the Prevent the Merging match and the Shuffling Forces match. The former is pretty simple, but requires you to act fast to take out some strong officer or generals before they merge and become even stronger. I'm pretty sure there was only one time where I was too slow to stop this from happening, and afterwards I only had to face a slightly stronger version of their former self. Then there are the shuffling force matches, which can be a little bit of a pain. On these maps, there will be one real officer and multiple duplicates of them spread around it. If you kill the wrong one, they all disappear and reappear again at full health. However, also spread throughout the map are several lesser officers, which you can kill to remove one doppelganger each. So you can either take a better shot at killing the right one, or just remove all the doppels until you're totally sure. Overall, neither of these match types are really that much of a hassle, and I'm truly thankful that neither of them have a mandatory time limit you're meant to just wait out. Once you have used all of the instruments at least once each, the way to the final challenge at the Windfish's Egg is opened up, where you'll have a similar face-off with Beast Ganon, which is par for the course for all of the final map challenges thus far. However, calling this the final challenge is rather misleading, as this is one of the easiest things you'll do on the island. The real difficulty comes in unlocking all of the last category of items that I mentioned, the rank 4 plus weapons. So what does 4 plus really mean? Well, to put it simply, this is a class of weapon which has the same strength as the rank 4 weapon weapons, which is 500 strength with 0 stars, or 750 with 5 stars. The rank 4 pluses have an extra element, and are visually a different color than their original versions. There are 12 4 plus weapons to get in this pack, meaning that in all likelihood each of the following DLCs will bring us 12 more, for a total of 36, which perfectly fits the original Legends cast, plus medley. The extra element that comes on these weapons is not random by the way, and the entire list is as follows. Link gets the Burning Gloves, which adds fire on top of lightning. Sheik gets the Shining Harp, which adds light on top of lightning. Lana gets the Gate of Tides, which adds water on top of lightning. Darunia gets the Dark Fire Hammer, which adds dark on top of fire. Ruto gets the Sun Dragon Scale, which adds light on top of water. Agatha gets the Incandescent Parasol, which adds fire on top of light. And a quick note with Agatha, I'm happy to say that her new parasol perfectly matches her new costume, as has been the theme thus far with her. Anyways, Cursed Minda gets the Thunderhead Shackle, which adds lightning on top of dark. Phi gets the Liquid Goddess Blade, which adds water on top of light. Child Link gets the Inflamed Deity's Mask, which adds fire on top of dark. Skull Kid gets the Crackling Ocarina, which adds lightning on top of dark. Tetra gets the Cutlass of Light, which adds light on top of water and King Daphne's gets the Supercharged Sail, which adds lightning on top of water. Now, there were plenty of questions on how these new elements come into play, so allow me to explain it for you now. I'm going to use Tetra's Cutlass of Light as an example. Originally, it was only water, meaning that attacking fire enemies would give Tetra a damage boost. However, it would be weaker against lightning element enemies, and do just average damage to both light and dark. Now that it has a light element on top of its water, the weapon will automatically adjust your damage depending on who you're attacking. Since the light element was added, Tetra can now do extra damage to dark enemies, who she originally had no damage boost on, since it could attack them with light. However, this also negates her weapon's ineffectiveness against lightning, since the light damage will now take preference over the water, which originally wouldn't have done much. In short, these 4 plus weapons are a huge game changer. You may be opening yourself up to new weaknesses, meaning that there are times where it's still worthwhile to hang on to your regular rank 4 weapons. However, being able to unlock the 4 plus weapons in the first place means that you should know how to handle yourself by that time in the game. Because these missions are by far the biggest challenges yet seen in the adventure mode. Most of the squares on the Koholnit Island map seem completely conquerable with your characters being around level 50, but I had to try, try, and try again for many of the 4 plus weapon missions. Raising the chosen character to level 70, if not 80, felt pretty necessary, especially if you didn't already have a multi-starred rank 4 weapon to bring along with you. There are a few of these maps that allow you to bring a second character along, meaning that I was able to trot out my level 100 plus Link or Ganondorf, but for the most part you're going to have to earn these very powerful powerful rewards through knowing your character and pumping them with levels beforehand. However, at the same time, it could just mean that I'm really, really bad with them. Be sure to let me know if you too found these challenges particularly difficult. Anyway, as I said at the beginning of this review, there was a lot to talk about to cover everything, so let me sum everything up. This DLC is currently priced at about $7 American, or $10 for the 3DS and Wii U combo pack, and I have to say that this is seriously some of the best value for my dollar I have ever gotten in gaming. Not only is there a crazy amount of content to cover here, 
but it's almost all good. Marin herself is easily worth the $7 in my opinion, and her reception amongst the Hyrule Warriors community seems to mirror that. My only real complaint is that Linkle's boots don't really impress that much. But overall, I continue to be very happy with every DLC pack Koei Tecmo and Nintendo have delivered for this game, and I look forward to the final two packs to come later this year. Now before you go on and click to one of my other videos, I would like to give a very special thanks to Triss from WeHe for providing all of the 3DS capture footage used in this video. Triss approached me about offering his help, and you're going to see a lot of great quality 3DS footage on my channel thanks to his help alone. If you enjoyed this video, rather than just supporting me with a like, I'd like to ask a quick favor of you. Either by clicking the link on screen or in the description, please head on over to Triss's channel, which is a fun group Let's Play channel with a focus on Nintendo games. I can speak from personal experience that when you're still small, even if your videos are well made, it can still be incredibly difficult to just get your name out there and have people give you a chance. I would like to see if, within my community, we can prove that you don't have to already be a huge channel to be worth exposure, which unfortunately I feel is the route that YouTube seems to be going in. Go on and check out WeHe, and if you would like to become a subscriber, be sure to tell them that GamesBrain sent you. Anyway, that's all from me everybody. Once again, thank you so much for watching, and I hope you take care. Thank you to Tori Starfrost and Austin Lau for being my top Patreon supporters. If you too would like to claim the Master Sword and become the hero of this channel, just click the link on screen and head on over to my Patreon page.